Uwagono dao, natumai mkopo wa mkofiti. I welcome you to celeb kona kii. The name of Sharon Otieno, a name that once mentioned in our country, the name of the former governor of Migori County, Okodo Bado, comes to your head. Many pointing fingers on the brutal murder that happened leading to Sharon Otieno's death. But... There are some new intriguing news that have come to light, or let me say intriguing details that have been revealed. And as I always say, once news come onto my news desk, I have to dig deep to try and verify the information before sharing it with my viewers and followers. And two days ago, a picture, uh, two pictures of the body of the late Sharon Otieno was posted by blogger Maverick Aoko Otieno on a Twitter page. Now, she explained on who really killed Sharon Otieno, and she refuted that Okodo Bado was not the mastermind behind the murder of Sharon Otieno. Remember, Okodo Bado is still in court until date trying to prove his innocence is innocence against the murder of Sharon Otieno. Now let's get down to details. According to Maverick Aoko, the person who killed Sharon Otieno was not the former Migori governor Okodo Bado, but his wife, Helen Obado. Now let's get down to details. Kulingana na yale Aoko aliweza kuyasema, ni ya kwamba ambaye alikuwa mpangaji mkuu katika mauaji ya Sharon Obado sio mwingine ila ni mkewe aliyekuwa gavana wa kaunti ya Migori Okodo Bado mkewe Ellen Obado ila mpaka leo polisi wameishi kumwandama Okodo Bado akitajwa kama mhusika mkuu ama mshukiwa mkuu katika mauaji yale now let's get down to what this lady said so that you will get the story as we proceed with it. It's a long story which brought this story again and revived it, calling upon the justice system in our country to speed up its process so that justice for Sharon Otieno would be served. According to Maverick Aoko, she, uh, Maverick Aoko on her ex account, she says, The person who killed Sharon was not Obado. It was his wife, Sharon. It was his wife, Ellen. On the night that Sharon Otieno was murdered, a few days before a murder, she texted Ellen Obado, the wife, to Governor. Mm, Governor uh, Okodo Bado, where she revealed to her that she was carrying a child for both a husband and a son. Now that was the greatest mistake, or let me say it was the grave mistake that Sharon Otieno made. She texted the wife and the mother to the people that she believed and the people that she was and uh, she was having an intimate affair with that you know what i am having a child for both your husband and your son how cruel and crucial is that listen according to the news and the details that have been shared by aoko it is not the first time that aoko has shared some details or some details through a social media page in expose of what happens in the corridors of power. And after digging deep into the stories, we came to find out that she was really speaking the truth. And that's why I don't doubt what she says in regards to the case of Okodo Bado and the wife and Sharon Otieno. Now, her fate was sealed that night the night that Sharon texted the wife to Okodo Bado. The meeting was held at Imperial Hotel. That's what uh, the lady says. Naftali, who was fired from police force, ndi alikuwa aliweka Sharon kisu ambacho kilimua. 
and she goes ahead to tag this guy by say instead of attacking me work with me anyway as we speak obado sword gold mines like mascalda to ruto and that's why the man remains untouchable in the current regime you know this case has been dragging in court since the night that the key, the murder of Sharon Otieno happened on the 3rd of September the year 2018 that night in Owade Omabi county now getting back to this story and what was shared by Aoko on the night that Sharon Otieno was killed Okodo Bado was in Nairobi and he was not only in Nairobi but according to a witness and a report that he gave in court a few months ago it revealed that Okodo Bado was having a meeting at the house of the former prime minister and ODM leader Raila Amolo Odinga this gave him a very concrete alibi because once Raila Odinga confirmed or the people around Raila Odinga confirmed that on that night I and Obado were in the same room that kept Obado out of the case which means Obado was not directly involved so he would not have been uh, he would not have been accused with the first degree murder charge what the police now try to bring against him as we speak right now is a case on the second degree murder which being which is being an uh, being an access or let me say an intermediary or a facilitator or an organizer of the said murder but according to these details this is where you realize this case has been dragging all along but Okodo Bado also has been trying to protect people around him because you know what once you are accused of such a case you cannot go ahead to confess even though you know the people that were involved because those people that were involved are your family including his wife and his son Now let's continue with what Aoko said. And I tell you this is not a joke because the second uh, tweet that Aoko made had an interaction of 1.1 million Kenyan uh, uh, of 1.1 million Kenyans tried to bring and revive this story again and that's why you've seen the name of Sharon Otieno trading on platform X as people try to verify this information that Aoko came with because it's very crucial now after the first post and the first tweet Aoko went ahead and this time round it was crucial what she posted because she posted the body of Sharon Otieno this body was in a bush you know i cannot post the picture here due to the copyright guidelines of youtube that guy does but once you visit the twitter account of or the ex account of mavrika oko you will see the photo and she says this photo of killed sharon obado you will never see they went ahead to take advantage of her then raped her and she was heavily pregnant with obado skid walimwa mtoto na kisu labor without an anesthesia lit by a lot naftali eleno bado's brother organized the goons he was a police who got fired out of misconduct a bra a half brother diki was sergeant at hams migori assembly if i am lying then da strike me now watch ni kueleze kulingana na oko na ile information ako nayo and those the people that have leaked these details to her wamemwambia ya kwamba usiku ule nduguye ambaye ni mkewe eh, governor Obado ambaye ni Ellen nduguye naye tambulikana kama Naftali ambaye alikuwa afisa wa serikali aliweza kutafuta guns ama majangili ama 
wakora ambao waliweza kutumika kufanya kitendo kile. Na huyu afisa ambaye ni ndugu ya Helen Obado aliweza kufutwa kazi. Unanielewa? Aliweza kufutwa kazi kwa sababu ya tabia ambazo hazikuendana na, 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 na jinsi ambavyo polisi wanapaswa kufanya kazi. Na akaendelea kwa kusema ndugu ye Ellen mwingine ambaye anatambulikana kama DK aliyekuwa sergeant term katika national uh, katika the assembly of migori aliweza kuhusika pia and i continue anasema i am not telling you here say naftali once told me he will rub pili pili on my nini aikasusu then drop me in river migori those are the sentiment that are also made implicating naftali who is and not yeah implicating naftali who is believed to be Eleanor Obado's brother now anasema my crime was supporting ochilo ayako orengo saved me i will tell you how in my book she continues by saying naftali is so dangerous he used to drive within migori in a white car with machetes kwa boot hmm? na mapanga now obado is currently ruto's chief mobilizer in nyanza i know his wife killed sharon no team but this was unnecessary ruto covering him now because they are in gold business makalda nyatike bwana i know very deep things very deep handle me with care dci now haya ni maneno kutokea kwa aoko after posting that picture she, she went ahead and posted another picture now this one was crucial because this one ilionyesha jinsi ambavyo Sharon alikuwa amedungwa kisu na kuweza kutolewa e, mtoto sio tunaelewana lakini na akasema hivi Sharon Obado DCI sent a hundred men to arrest aoko look at what they should focus on hiyo ndio picha aliyoiweka picha ambayo ilizua mazungumzo makubwa sana pale kwenye mitandao ya kijamii wengi aswa wa Kenya wakimuomba haiondoe no, kulingana na hii picha mtaniruhusu kidogo ni wasome what uh, what people were saying dp amadan chapter anasema aoko which planet are you on it seems you are an alien from mars or somewhere where are you getting these images from i tell you those images are the crime scene images wakati tu mwili ulipatikana hata haukiwa au jafunikwa meaning this lady knows a lot and she has intel on what really happened to Sharon Otieno on the night that she was killed now continuing mwingine ad slabs anamwambia hauko the family members are on this platform bana mwingine Jackson Owe anasema pull it down Maverick hauko anawaambia tell your mother to pull it down it was a daughter Mm, Joroge Masako anasema come on Maverick anawaambia what say it ongea mm, mwingine anasema aoko bana lenga hizi lenga hizi tu manzi but aoko said i won't pull the picture down because this is what these people did to the lady mm, awa watu walipitishia huyu binti mambo ambayo amwezi hata kuyafikiria before they killed her that's what Aoko says. Now, after looking at what Aoko said, I had to go back kiasi to the to, to the former report and the initial report that was made by police and also the prosecutor's report in court which was uh, brought forward against Okodobado. Now, I want to to bring you these details in a form in a way that you will all get to understand what really transpired the night that Sharon Obado uh, uh, I mean Sharon Otieno was killed now getting down to business eh uh, tunazama this is what goes on mm. uh, this is what was revealed by this uh, by this lady Maverick Aoko in the guns to the night that Sharon Otieno was murdered Tunaelewana tuko pamoja mpaka hapo. Mm. Let's get down to details. The unborn child 
or Sharon Otien, uh, uh, the unborn cha child Sharon Otien was carrying when she was murdered in 2018, suffered stab wounds on its upper belly, a cold heart, when uh, the case was presented. Now, the Migori governor, Okodo Bado, who, is the main who, was the main, who has remained to be the main suspect in Sharon's murder and the father of the child, it said that she watched the images as were shown in court. Obado was accused of the murder of Sharon's baby kid too. Now, one image after the other, Obado's concentration shifted. He would be seen scrolling through his phone as government pathologist Dr. Johnson Odoo shared his post-mortem examination findings. At the time Sharon was killed, she had suffered seven stab wounds and two slash wounds. The first stab wound was so severe that it went through her womb. This led to the death of the unborn baby, 12 weeks shy of the birth date. In a opening statement, Assistant Director of Public Prosecution Catherine Moniki said Sharon's murder was a puzzle, but with the evidence obtained, their witnesses will create a complete would create a complete picture of, of what transpired prior to to and after the murder. She said the prosecution team would demonstrate to the court how Obado and his co-accused created the opportunity, facilitated the crime, orchestrated the, di uh, the deliberate cover-up cover of the murders and how they willingly engaged in actions aimed at obstructing justice. Sharon met Obado in November 2017. She was a student at Rongo University at the time, Obado being the Migori governor, Mwaniki said was very influential and had the capability to improve the circumstances of Sharon's life. Listen to what she said. My lady, I want to invite the court and all of you to reflect on our time during campus days. It's a youthful stage where one is learning about the world. It's a stage filled with possibilities of what one can do or be and at some point make good choices but also make mistakes. Moniki said. Now the prosecutor said she will not shy away from demonstrating who Sharon was, the beautiful, vibrant lady as described by Moniki, left behind three children. Tunailewana. Now, until there, it's a clear indication that Sharon knew Okodo Bado for about two years, or no, about a year before she was killed. Are you getting me? Now, Let's get back to the story. How did Sharon Otieno also get involved with Okodo Bado's son? Sharon Otieno was a, was a lady that was trying to find a way to make it in life. And you know, the campus ladies, they have a way of trying to get things done. And Sharon, a way was a beauty. And she believed, you know what? If somebody like the governor of Migori has found some interest in me, then I must exploit that opportunity. But once she exploited the opportunity and even took advantage of the relationship between her and Obado and also went a step further to involving the son, that's where she went wrong. Now, apart from that, she also went ahead to reveal that she had the relationship between the son and the father to the mother or to the woman that was married to Obato. Eh? And you know how such things unfold. Now getting down to uh, the, the people that were also accused with Sharon, uh, with the Obado on the murder of Sharon Otieno. Now the lead investigator in the murder of Rongo University student Sharon Otieno Said former Migori governor Okodo Bado's head Michael Oyamo planned the events leading to her death. Nicholas Olesena told trial judge Cecilia Gidua that he didn't do cell-phone triangulation for the people who were with Sharon on the night she was murdered because they already had a suspect, Oyamo. The person who had planned all these was Oyamo. The other two people involved in these had no phones. From, uh, from their investigations, they established that on that faith, faithful day, Oyamo lured Sharon and a journalist who was under witness protection to a car that was waiting for them 300 meters from Graka Hotel in Rongo after a brief meeting. The journalist who managed to escape that 
out of the moving vehicle made his report that the investigators largely relied on in charging the accused persons. The evidence of the journalist and the tax driver named Oyamo, Olesena further confirmed to the court that Oyamo had falsified medical reports from Kisi Hospital to support his abduction theory on the night Sharon was killed. He had made a report at Uriri police station claiming that he was a victim of abduction on the night of September 3rd. His report to the police was that his assailants had knives but did not use them and that he found himself in the streets of Kisi the following morning. He was taken to hospital by members of the public. A medic who test testified in the case confessed to having forged medical records for Oyamo to lie that he had been attacked by unknown people on the night Sharon was murdered. But even as the investigators gave evidence in court, Oyamo, through his lawyer, Meso Oganda, took issue with the inconsistencies of the two crucial prosecution witnesses. The two were Jackson Og G Jackson Gombe, a tax driver who allegedly ferried Sharon to Kondera Forest, where she met her death, and the journalist. One of the inconsistencies pointed out by Oganda was the journalist said when they left Gra Graka Hotel, Oyamo boarded the vehicle, but the tax driver on the other hand said Oyamo did not. Asked which report he believed to be true, Olesena said both. Another discrepancy was that the journalist in his evidence said Oyamo was on the phone throughout, but Gombe said Oyamo was quiet. Gombe was the prosecution that the eighth witness when he gave his evidence, he told the court that he would not believe his own evidence because of the contradictions. He had written two statements detailing, detailing what transpired on that night. Now due to this, and when you look at it and what Aoko Otieno has brought forward, you realize that the cover-up was so big and it brings up the inconsistencies that might lead to uncovering the real culprit that killed Sharono, Sharono Tieno. But if what Aoko says is true, then there was a person that remained behind the curtains and played the role that Obado was supposed to play, which involved bringing in the people that they trusted who carried out the act involving certain goons like the man that you hear here being named, that is Oyamo. You know, this case will continue to lag in court for so many years uh, as we make this report today. But truth will remain. One day it will come to light. And as I look at it and what our court you know, said, there is a greater chance that what she said was true. For now, I leave it there. All I can do is remind you that this is Celeb Corner KE, and here we're trying to bring, we try to bring you the report on everything that is trending and that is making headlines in the country. Please don't forget to go ahead and subscribe.